Okay, well, I have never been a fan of canning butter. I have tried it once and I didn't like it. I know a lot of other people will can butter and are quite happy with the results. I was not. So normally I keep butter in the fridge. Now, I have heard of people making ghee or even buying it and from in my area I can buy ghee. There are a number of grocery stores that carry it because of the um, diversity of people in this area. So ghee is available for me, store-bought, but I think I'm going to try to uh, make my own and I'm going to just start off with one pound of butter in case I don't like it. Same thing that I did when I uh, canned butter. I just started off with a bit of it and as I said I was not happy with the results. I wasn't comfortable with the results and if you're not comfortable don't do it. So I've got my stove on. It's apparently fairly easy to make. Um, just cut your butter up in chunks and um, heat it up, get it up to a boil, then turn it down and simmer it until all the um, milk solids separate and from there you um, scoop out the milk solids that float to the top and we'll see what happens from there. Like I said this is my first attempt so don't know how successful it will be. I suspect it'll be fine but one never knows what the first time somebody tries something how it will work out and that is why I'm just starting off with a small amount. I also don't know if I'll like using the I understand the value of removing the milk solids so that it will um, allow you to cook things. I mean this would burn at a higher temperature without the milk solids. So you'll get a nice uh, browning on things like steaks and we don't eat much steaks around here but even on uh, chicken breasts you probably get a nice browning effect using ghee or butter without the milk solids so I can understand the benefit we will try it and it is shelf stable does not have to go in the fridge I mean that's the reason why people can butter is to try and make it shelf stable so they don't have to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, I freeze mine for now. We'll see what happens. If I like baking ghee, I may end up just keeping some in the refrigerator or some in the freezer and some in jars. <laughs> okay, and I don't know that I want to buy store-bought ghee. I don't know that there's an issue with it at all, but right now I'm just going to make my first uh, attempt at it. All right, so we'll get this down to a melting point and uh, then I'll bring the camera up closer and hopefully we can see what's going on. Okay, so I've got the camera repositioned. Hopefully we can watch it from here. And it is starting to melt quite nicely. And I'll probably have to turn the heat down in a few minutes. Okay, it has started to bubble, and I'm going to turn this down now so that it just simmers and you could already see the milk solids coming to the top here so but not separated enough that yet that you can scoop them off okay at this point it's been slowly simmering away for approximately 10 minutes and I'm going to try and remove some of the surface milk solids now. Milk solids now. Okay, and 
what I understand happens is that some of the milk solids will also sink to the bottom and we don't try to scoop those out just what's on the surface at least that's my understanding okay and I'm gonna let this simmer away for a little while yet and uh, get back to you in a little while okay so I was cooking this just a bit too slow uh, so I've turned up the heat just a tad and uh, I guess it depends on whose recipes you follow one of them told me it takes 45 minutes to make another one tells me it takes 10 minutes to make so what we're doing right now is waiting for the um, milk solids at the bottom to get a nice golden color and then we will strain this so I'm just gonna let this bubble away until that occurs okay okay and a little further along into the process it seems to be um, boiling away all the milk solids and according to the instructions that I've read we wait until the bottom is the golden color I think it's heading in that direction it isn't quite there yet and that should um, give it more of a nutty flavor looking good so far and I have prepared a little mason jar I've actually got two of them but uh, I figured that this size and style would be pretty easy for me to be able to scoop out the ghee rather than having ones with crevices that are going to be a little harder to get uh, or, or narrower uh, mouth as well so and I've got my little strainer with a, a good amount of cheesecloth all folded up and it's ready to go and I do have a second jar ready in case one is not enough I have no idea how much this will make. I know that we started off with a pound, I guess what is a pound of butter would be 454 grams according to the uh, sizing on the package. So yes it looks like it's boiling away all the um, milk solids quite nicely. Okay get back to you when I think it's a little closer to being done. I don't think we're far off now. Okay, well now I have strained my uh, clarified butter slash ghee into a, a Pyrex heavy duty two cup Pyrex uh, measuring cup because it is very hot and from there I'm going to pour it into um, half pint yes they are half pint wide mouth jars which I think will make it easier to be able to scoop out the ghee the butter when I want it I, uh, by the looks of things I could have used a wide mouth one wide mouth pint jar but I think I prefer this method and uh, I like those jars for this particular application so looks like I have my ghee and this product is now shelf stable I believe it's good for six months maybe longer I'll have to double check on that but I'm uh, pleased with the results and I'm just gonna find some lids and rings um, let this cool off and I do understand that it does firm up when it's cooled off it doesn't stay in the liquid form and uh, there you have it pure oil <laughs> pure oil from butter and yeah. hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I, I've learned something and I hope you have too and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.